So these were originally split over three videos, but I wanted to put them together so that we can see what a full workout looks like when it comes to ball control. We want to start with our warm ups and then we want to go into the actual more advanced crossovers and then into moves. So let's get down. Let's check this out. Now, what we're seeing right here at the beginning of this video is our warm up, just to be able to warm up our dribbling and to be able to obviously work on our handles. Most of these drills are going to be very basic when it comes to the warm up because we're just really trying to just get warmed up. That's the whole idea behind it. Now, what we're going to be combining with the drills that we do today is some finishing as well as some shooting off of the dribbles. So let's get down and let's check out these basketball drills. But really quickly, make sure to go check out my shooting workout that is down in the description below if you are looking for a workout that will help you shoot the ball from further away. In this video today, we have a Desiree, which is the little guy, and we have David, who is the older kid in this video Let's get down and let's check out these drills. Now, in this first clip, what we are doing is glide dribbles through the legs, gliding back and forth. After four to five crosses, we want to then attack the rim. Being able to know how to do a glide cross and being able to practice that is extremely important. And obviously a Desiree there wasn't exactly doing a glide cross perfectly, but we need to be able to adjust these drills to players of all ages. We can't just go to an advanced drill right away. And that's what I wanted to show you here. With a Desiree, we can do these drills, but he takes a dribble in between. Now, when it comes to attacking, we want to attack off of one dribble. If we're at the free throw line, if you can attack with zero dribbles and take two big steps forward under FIBA rules, you're allowed two steps, that would be even better as well. The whole idea is just being able to control that glide cross and being able to attack and finish with a layup out of that glide cross. Now, this is essentially the same drill, but now we're moving further back to the three point line and we are now trying to do that same glide cross, but now behind the back and then attacking one dribble, taking some kind of a sidestep or step back into a mid-range or a three-point shot. Now, this was recorded back when David was a grade eight. A Desiree here, see how he's taking that dribble in between these glide crosses. He's a grade five in this clip. He's a bit younger. However, what we're trying to work on here is our shiftiness. Our a glide cross is going to be a move that will allow you to be able to create a gap or at least a lane to be able to attack that rim or create a shot for yourself. Now this next drill is going to be same glide crosses, but now we are attacking the basket with me with a pad. And the ability to be able to spin off and make contact with a defender and then still finishing afterwards is a move and obviously a strategy that allows a lot of players, for example, Shea Gilgis Alexander, a player like that, to be able to score at the NBA level. Now, for players who are younger, who may be attacking the basket for the first time when it comes to making contact, using a pad and being able to create that contact with the pad is an extremely important thing to be able to do. Now, as you can see here, David is finishing not with just with jump shots, but also finishing with the ability to finish at the rim, with her, whether it's a left hand or a right hand. I want him to be creative. I'm not telling him the exact move I wanna see every single time. I want him to be able to react to the defense that I am giving him, whether it's on the left side, whether I'm following him down as I did right there, different types of contact that he is able to handle is going to really help him in the game of basketball. And obviously, whatever we do on one side, we also want to do on the other side as well. Now we are working on with a pad and I've got that stick. I want him to, I want David to be able to react to what I'm doing. So there, that last move, he did a little bit of a pullback and a little bit of a hesitation. He did that there here too, but he added a little bit of crossovers. I want him to be able to make that contact, get a couple of crossovers, and then be able to attack the rim. Try to be a, a type of player who will hesitate and make the defender really work 
And if you can do that, you're going to be a very successful player. As long as you do that with very limited dribbles. So in this first move or drill, what we are basically essentially doing is receiving the pass, attacking the room with one dribble and then one quick either behind the back or behind the leg dribble. This is going to allow us to stop extremely quickly and we are going to be then pulling for a shot right as soon as we finish that crossover. The idea is as soon as your defender's shoulders are facing away from you, they are facing the baseline, that's when you pull back. You do a snatch back through the back of your leg or behind your back. And in this case, you would be pulling for the shot. The next option that you have out of the snatch back is a direct drive to the rim. So the idea here is you've done that snatch back, you've stopped, you've allowed that defender to now be way in front of you so that now you crossover you use that snatch over crossover to be able to attack the opposite direction so for example here we were attacking on the right side we snatch back and then we start to attack on our left this allows us to change directions so that you are able to of course score on your defender much easier now in this next option out of a snatch back we do that snatch back and then we cross back over to the same direction as to where we were originally driving from the idea here is now essentially for example here we're driving left we do that quick snatch back and then we drive back on that left side this is a one way that you can actually break the ankles of a defender the idea here is now if he was no longer having his shoulders squared up against you and now he's facing the baseline you do that snatch back and then when he is trying to recover back to guard you, that's when you cross back over to the same direction as to where you were going. His momentum is taking him in a different direction as you are going, and you're going to be able to finish at the rim or with a jump shot without any defender. Now, after that snatch back, another option that you have when you do that snatch back and you attack in the opposite direction is to then do a spin after that first dribble. So on that first dribble, you do that spin after that snatch back, and what you are essentially doing here is now spinning off of that defender who was originally with you, who is now recovering back to try and guard you, and this spin is pretty well unstoppable at most age groups. Now, with my goal with players like David, as we see right here, is to try and help him become as creative as possible. And this is kind of a very difficult style of snatchback where you cross over first and then do a snatchback behind your back. Now, this is not going to be a move that you will generally do in game. You may only pull this off once in your lifetime. But what you're actually working on here is not the move itself. It is the ability to be able to do multiple different types of crossovers moving in directions that you're not usually normally moving in which will allow you to gain the ability to dribble the ball better. Ball control is extremely important and while working on drills like this one right here, while this is technically a move that you could pull off in game if your name is Rob Dillingham, in reality, these are not moves that you would be doing at these last two moves that you're seeing because these are more for drills that will help you with ball control. In this first video, I have myself defending David and also a Desiree as well in this clip, or at least in this video, but the idea here is for David or Desiree to be able to get to the rim within two or three dribbles max and create contact with myself. You will never be able to get to that rim. If you have a defender, you'll never be able to get to that rim in a game if you don't make contact with them. Basketball is a contact sport. And if you can make contact with your defender first, you will be able to have the advantage over your defender. So here you want to make contact early and then you want to then make your move so that you can get to the rim much easier. In this next drill, same thing. However, now we want to make that quick hit on that defender and then use that to create a gap between ourselves and our defender so that we can pull for the mid-range shot. We all want to be that three-level score where you can score at the rim, score in the mid-range, and then score at the three-point line. At the three-point line, a lot of our scoring is going to be from set shots or coming off of a screen or a dribble handoff. While in the mid-range and in the the low post what we're going to find is we need to make contact first with our defender and then that will allow us to get our shot off you need to create that contact so that you create that space
Now going with the idea of attacking quickly, we want to now receive that pass while running from the half court line to the point. There's a lot of times where we can be a trailer in our offense. And as soon as you get that reverse pass back at the point, you need to then attack quickly. And whether that's a quick in and out cross or a quick crossover through the legs or whatever, we just need to be able to change up our crossovers, maybe a killer cross, whatever it may be. But something quick crossover because you're gonna have a defender there anyways, get around him and then finish with the layup or now finish with that jump shot. Quick one or two crossovers and then pull for that shot or attack the rim. Now, this can be done with a defender as well, but the idea here is just to be able to do it quickly, no contact, just so that we can work on our shot and our finish. Now, like I was mentioning earlier, a lot of our three-point shots are going to be either off the dribble, off the catch, or off of a dribble handoff screen something. So now what we wanna do is to dribble in from half, quickly pull for that three point shot at the point. Now, this is something that David does a lot in game, not just because he practices it, but because when you come down on a two, three zone as a point guard and they're not guarding you, you either split the gap and you go between the top two defenders and you score, or if you feel confident in your shot, like David has a very good three-point shot, you can pull that three right from the point. And then, what's if especially if you hit that shot, that's going to pull the other team either out of the zone or it's going to pull them out of the three-point line, which now creates gaps for your teammates to be able to score. Now, in our final drill, we're going to be coming from the corner up to the wing. We're going to be trying to do that as fast as we can. We're going to stop, go behind our back, and pull for the three. Now, what this is actually going to help us with is, of course, footwork, our ability to cross over and shoot. That's all the basics of what we're working on here. However, this is actually something that you can use in-game because you're going to be coming off of a screen, most likely, at least with some teams, when it's, when it's a screen for the corner player. It's actually a very deadly area to set a screen because you can hit the, the roll man along the baseline and then he has options for scoring or passing. Or coming off of a screen and roll in the corner, you can pull for a three-point shot. And this is one of the ways, plus you're learning the footwork, so that you can pull for that three-point shot. Now, if you want to become a better three-point shooter or somebody who can shoot from further away from the rim, make sure to go check out my shooting workout that is down in the description below because that is going to help you build the strength to be able to shoot from further away. So this is what a full one and a half hour workout with David looks like. These are all drills that will help you become a better basketball player and handle the ball better. Really quickly, if you want to be able to shoot the ball from further away, make sure to go check out my shooting workout that is down in the description below.